Good evening, friendos. It's time for Quest for Semi-Glorious. I'll Android Tech the speedruns tonight. Maybe Infinity Drive later on. Depends on how we're feeling. Uh, so tonight, well, last time, we finally set our final baseline for Licorice on Campaign Plus uh, for the speedrun. But we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again because I need to record a submission video for Super Stigma Slam 2019. And my plan right now is to make that a licorice run. So we're gonna get some practice in and get some material in for a submission video. So with that said, I'm gonna do my best to do the commentary I would do during a marathon run, and then also try to go fast, which uh, sometimes those two things are mutually exclusive. Um, but uh, we'll, just, we'll just see, we'll just see how it goes, you know? Yeah, do, do our best, do our best. So let's get this going in three, two, one! Go, 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 whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, I hit the wrong button! Haha! <laughs> Perfect. Alright, let's, let's try that again. Oops. 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 Oh, things are going super wrong already. <laughs> what a good start. <laughs> alright, alright, alright. A little, a little, a little nervous there. That's fine. Okay, so three, two, one. Go, 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 go. Alright, so this is Assault Android Cactus, a top-down twin-stick shooter. The uh, overarching story to it is that uh, a long-haul space freighter, the Genki Star, has been overrun by its robotic crew. You are tasked with uh, getting rid of the uh, homicidal robots, so that's what we're going to try to do. There are 19 levels, 4 bosses, a mini-boss, and a final boss. 9 playable characters, each of which has their own specific primary and secondary weapon. You'll see me... Uh, swapping back and forth between the two quite often during the course of the run, uh, because that is the uh, most successful thing you can do, or the best thing you can do to find success. So I'm playing as Licorice. Uh, she is not a character that's available from the start, um, but you do unlock her after completing the normal campaign one way through. Um, but her primary weapon is this thick Vorpal Cannon. You see me firing a whole bunch right now. And her secondary is this fun kind of melee blade slash thing. Now the unique thing about her secondary is that you can either do one super powerful fully charged slash, uh, one medium and one small slash, or three small slashes in quick succession. And you'll see me kind of leverage all three of those types uh, at various points throughout the run. But this very first level is uh, supposed to be kind of the very chill kind of introduction to the game and all that, but, uh, or at least that would be accurate if we were playing the standard campaign mode. Uh, since this is campaign plus an ultra hard mode, uh, that unlocks after you beat the normal campaign, uh, the typical learning curve is kind of thrown right out the window, and you are expected to play on top level from the very beginning. And you might have seen that uh, if you were paying close attention at the beginning of the level. So that was, a, that was a pretty good, solid first level. But the game is divided into five separate zones. Right now we are in zone one, the cargo hold. And each zone kind of has its own unique aesthetic. A unique uh, color scheme, some unique level layouts to it. Uh, but now we're in level two, this is Turbine. And as you can see, it comes straight out the gate. Just full bore, you better be prepared, otherwise you are going to have a very bad time. But each zone has four levels and a boss, with the exception of Zone 5, which has three and a half levels, uh, a kind of penultimate boss, and then the final boss at the very end. Well, it's dangerous to stay in the center for that phase. So for anybody who's ever played this game at all in the past, these levels will look very familiar, because Campaign Plus, which is the uh, ultra-hard mode we're playing on right now, uses all of the same levels except they are modified in some way. Uh, most often a simple rotation, ouch, just took a dumb down there. A simple rotation uh, as well as a huge, huge, hugely increased number of enemies, which is what makes it an ultra hard mode to begin with. I tried to do a charge slash there, it didn't work very well. Licorice is not great at uh, dealing with the wasp hands. I produce a whole bunch of the tiny enemies. On the other hand, she is quite adept at taking out big boys, like those big toaster dogs. Big red missile launcher things. So a huge spread of enemies, uh, most of them have three different variants to them. We're seeing a whole bunch of the toaster dog type enemies, the, the big red ones that shoot the missiles, the blue ones that kind of latch onto you and drag you around. 
Plus, we're uh, since this is campaign plus mode, we're gonna see many, many more uh, of the kind of higher tier enemies and less of the kind of basic tier enemies. And also just a, a huge increase in the number of enemies just overall, both low and high tier. Oof. As well as many more of uh, many more enemies that normally you'd only see once or twice in the standard campaign mode, like the blue turrets, which we have seen. Uh, two of so far. There's only one in the normal campaign mode way near the end. You can tell just how uh, wild this gets as we go along here. So that's level two. We had a silly down in there, but that's not too bad, I guess. So level three, this is filament. Uh, this is very similar to the standard campaign filament as well, but rotated again. <laughs> So any muscle memory you might have uh, learned of doing the normal campaign is kind of out the window at this point. But you just kind of do your best and hope for the hope for the best after that. So filament's kind of hook is that uh, on occasion the lights will go out. Oops, I messed that up a little bit. I was trying to jump across and get this other big boy out of the way, but it didn't quite work out. That one went very well, though. So the other eight characters have their own unique sets of primary and secondary weapons. Um, so there's definitely something for everybody as far as play style and kind of what weapons you prefer. But they all play differently enough that it's not really, it's not really any repeats, necessarily. They all have their own unique strengths and weaknesses, and you know, people get used to one over the other or whatever, but it's not like any of them are duplicates of each other. It's all very unique. Ooh, ooh, that was a little close. Ooh, that was an interesting... <laughs> Triple slash there. Oof. So if we get time and I'm not ultra concentrating on not doing stupid things here, I'll try to describe the enemies as they come about. So the real basic enemies we'll see a whole bunch of are the kind of four-legged robot walkers, the kegs. <laughs> Those come in three different variations. The green ones, which just kind of hobble towards you fairly slowly and try to melee you. Uh, the white ones, which will shoot a basic stream of three bullets apiece, which I'm not sure we've seen many of those so far. And then the big red ones, which are extremely slow, um, but fire spreads bullets at you as they, as they walk forward. There's also these big boys, the titans. The ones that huck bombs at you are called bomber titans. They're pretty common. There's also a red variant that pounds the ground and sends an energy wave at you called the Blaster Titans. And also the the big blue ones uh, called Buster Titans that leap towards you and try to smash you into the ground. We've already seen a few of those in previous levels as well. There's also these tiny flying robots, these red ones, Turbo Jets. There's a, a, a weaker white variant called just regular jets. I don't think there's a third variant of those. Okay, so now we're seeing some white kegs. Um, some white toaster dogs, or white fidos, rather, that shoot a single missile that targets you and lands shortly thereafter. You see the red targeting reticles every now and again. And there's a, a plethora of turrets. The white ones shoot sprays of bullets. The red ones shoot uh, red lasers rotating in a clockwise direction. And the blue ones shoot a... Uh, stream of blue lasers rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Now the color of bullets and enemy attacks is actually rather important. There's three different attack types. There's blue, there's red, and there's orange. You'll see all the player characters, all the player androids, shoot orange bullets. Or, or have orange attacks. And those only hurt robots. If you were playing uh, with more than one person, co-op or something like that, uh, your bullets would not hurt anybody else, any of the other androids. The enemies, for the most part, will shoot blue bullets, and the blue bullets can only hurt player characters, so the player androids. 
And then there's also another damage type, the red damage type, which you'll see in lasers and mine explosions there, uh, which damage both androids and, uh, and enemy robots. Which can be used to great effect if you time a big explosion to hit a huge group of enemies. Now we're on to the Zone 1 boss, this is Embryo. He is typically not too much of a problem, at least in normal campaign mode. But in Campaign Plus, he's gotten a bit of an upgrade. So he's a bit beefier. A bit harder to manage. But luckily we can do a pretty good number on him without hopefully any silly stuff happening. Mm, like that almost was. <laughs> We're going to do our best to get full slashes on him, just to take him down. And maybe save a little bit for the next slash. This next phase is kind of a pain, he rushes at you, but we're just going to shut him down and, and not really worry about it too much. Oof, that was pretty good. Pretty good and close there. Oh, okay. He almost got us there. That's all right. Ooh, easy. So as we're going along, there are three, also three different power-up types. Red, blue, and yellow. The blue one sitting there is called a shutdown. It freezes everything on the screen, and anything caught in its wave takes double damage. Uh, the red one is firepower, which spawns two firing drones on either side. And the yellow one is Accelerate, which causes you to move faster and attracts little white power-ups towards you. That was not a great embryo fight. Lost a bunch of time. So these little white things that we've been seeing, you know, since the very beginning are the weapon powers. And your primary weapon can go from level 0 all the way up to level 3. And as it powers up, you get more bullets, or they become stronger, or, or, and stuff like that. But part of what Accelerate does is it also draws in the weapon energy much faster and from a much greater distance so you don't have to walk around nearly as much to get them. Grab it right there, see all that stuff comes chunking into us there. And that's kind of the basic lowdown on the various power-ups. Now, instead of discrete lives like most shmups have, most twin sticks have, you have a primary overarching battery meter in the top center there. And when that's full, you have about one minute. One minute that you can walk around and do whatever it is you want to do. Hopefully shoot and destroy robots. But in order to keep that going, you see enemies drop a battery every now and again. And each battery pickup is 20 to 25 seconds added to that meter up at the top. So while getting knocked down isn't necessarily the end of the world, it does cost you time. It keeps you from continually destroying robots, continuing to pop out batteries, as well as powering down your weapon every time you get knocked to the ground. So it's really in your best interest to not get knocked down. So that you continue destroying robots, popping batteries, and keeping your game going. Of course, that's much easier said than done sometimes, as things do get rather wild. But since we destroyed Embryo, we are into the first level of Zone 2. You can see we have a, a nice, fresh, new aesthetic here, as well as some new music. And in normal campaign, we'd be introduced slowly to new enemy types, but since this is uh, Campaign Plus, we get the full suite of everything straight from the get-go. But here are the, the tiny flying enemies, the wasps. Those are kind of a... more of an annoyance than a true threat, but if they mob you, it can be a bad time. We've also seen cans of wasps that produce a whole bunch of them when you bust them open. Kind of like in Pinata, but <laughs> much less exciting. We have also seen cans of mines, which instead of wasps on the inside, they produce uh, explosive mines, which are much less exciting. That's about it for the enemy types. 
we'll see them in various waves and patterns, and then we've got to just kind of deal with it as we go along here. Oh, I guess we didn't talk about the Reapers, the enemies that are charging the lasers off to fire at me there. There are two different variants of those, the red ones which shoot the red lasers, which we just saw, and then the blue ones, which we have seen in the past, uh, that teleport around and shoot spread of, spreads of blue bullets. It can be rather painful if you're not paying attention to what they're doing. Kind of get caught in a, a bad situation. Ah, lame. right there. I got knocked down. Lost just about all of my weapon energy. Now I have to kind of build it back up and hope for the best. So the red turret shooting out red lasers, as uh, mentioned before, actually damages uh, enemy robots for me too. So it might be a good strategy to leave those alive for a bit so they can do some damage for you. But if you're not really prepared for it, you can also take a lot of silly hits from it. So sometimes the best policy is to just to nuke them as soon as you see them and then do your own dirty work. So here are the big mine cans, and especially in narrow spots, it's a a bit bad. But kind of one of the core uh, strategies you pick up is <laughs> leveraging iframes, leveraging your invincibility periods. And you're essentially invincible whenever you turn white. So you can see I I'm white whenever I'm flying around doing my slash. Uh, I turn white briefly when I get up from getting knocked down. Uh, shutdown gives you about five seconds worth of invincibility, so it's good to leverage it there. And then you're also very briefly invincible every time you swap weapons. So that's very important to get the timing of that kind of down. It's a second nature, really. So that if things get a little bit dicey, you can sometimes save yourself just by panic swapping your weapon. Leverage that. I think it's about half a second of invincibility to get through a real tight spot. Sometimes it's almost necessary to do that, even if you're not going to use your secondary weapon. You should probably still use it to stay alive. third level of Zone 2 is Oxygen. We kind of didn't talk very much about uh, the previous level, Influx, but it has a, a unique thing to it where the level is kind of deconstructing and reconstructing around us for each enemy wave. Which is kind of nice. It's a nice little unique thing to some of the levels. We'll see more of that kind of come into play later on in some of the later levels as well. So that was a, a pretty decent oxygen. We're still not really gaining any time back, though. So here's the final level of Zone 2. This is Process, one of my least favorite ones because of the inclusion of conveyor belts, which do terrible, terrible things to your movement. <laughs> so we are going to try to stay off of them as much as we can, or at least leverage them to not be so bad for us. But... That is always not always possible. There's also these little bits that pop up pillars and block your shots or block your movement. Also a little bit painful. And now the conveyor belts are really going here. 
and eventually we will see uh, the turrets kind of hop down on the conveyor belts and they'll be moving around a bunch, which is really not fun. Probably try to keep an accelerate on us just to make movement across these conveyor belts a little bit less painful. Alright, see there's a, a turret popping down on the conveyor belt. We're just not going to deal with that. Get rid of it right away. Mm, there, we almost lost it. <laughs> see, look at that. Look at that jumping up into the middle and trying to laser our face. Forget that stuff. And on occasion, you'll, you'll see me leave these power-ups just lay on the ground. They do cycle through from red to yellow to blue and back again approximately every five seconds. So if I don't want to pick up what it has right now, I just wait a little bit and pick up the next thing or the next thing after that. Alright, that was a pretty solid process. No downs, and a casual S+. Plus. The scoring system in this game is really unique as well. You get five different ranks from D, C, B, A, and S. And then you can also get a special rank, S+, plus, uh, which has its own unique kind of requirements to get. Jeez. Well, this is a uh, Zone 2 boss. This is Vespula. She can be a bit painful, especially for Licorice. Because, yeah, see, look at that. Just a bunch of wasps just mobbed me, and I took an immediate down. Oof, that was, uh, very close. But she's got six discrete phases, you can see on her life bar at the bottom. Oh, boy. We're in phase two now. And we'll soon be into phase three, I hope. Ugh, please, thank you. <laughs> so now she's in phase three, back in her ball with a lot of wasps around her. Try to get out there. Nope, not gonna happen. This is the second boss. Boss is zone two. Let's see, two more bosses. For zone three and four, respectively. And then a final boss at the end of zone five. And then another boss in between there. Hey, Valiant Chiefs, how you doing? Let's see. Oof, SBY. Oh, that was a, a good cut across there. Another vine attack got me. It's your birthday today, having a quiet one. Well, happy birthday! Happy birthday. Oh, that's not gonna end well. <laughs> Shoot. Vespi is always a pain, regardless of which character you use. Vespi Plus, especially. My goodness. No matter how good you are at the game, and I won't claim to be very good at it. She is always a pain. I'm not gonna deal with this, so I'm just gonna shut her down and do a full slash in safety. Oh my goodness, that was very close. <laughs> oh, nice. Ooh, boy, that was like three or four downs on Vespi alone. Yeah. Yikes. Not, uh, not our best showing. That's right, so now we're into zone three. New aesthetic, new tunes, in my opinion. My humblest of opinion, the best tunes in the game, but, you know, reasonably people can disagree. But here's kind of a unique level. This is checkpoint. And instead of being in a large arena, you're moving down a long hallway. And kind of the unique thing about this hallway is that it will go on forever. And ever and ever and ever as long as there are still enemies alive in these phases. So the idea is to just keep destroying robots as we go along and eventually we'll hit the end of the hallway. And then the end of the level. But this is one of two levels set up like this. The next one we'll see 
or the other corridor based one we'll see in zone 4. I'll just kind of keep moving here, grab power ups as they come, and, and hope for the best. <laughs> Shut down the half right there. So typically, you'll see. I always want to keep firepower for extra damage output, and then anything else we pick up kind of after that is a little bit extra. Like, we don't really need accelerate, we don't really need shutdown. They're just kind of nice to have to make things a bit safer. For other characters, though, sometimes Accelerate is almost required <laughs> to do well. But almost always having firepower is usually the way to go. Oh, that was a bad slash. Didn't have much going on there. Pretty okay checkpoint. We lost a little bit of time there. That's alright. Oh. You know, you get Jeff on stream yesterday talking about composing in Hand of Fate. Nice! That's pretty cool. Oh, whoops. Kind of aborted out of that slash a little bit too soon. Let me get the damage done for that. That was a little bit dangerous. Oh, I guess one of the enemy types we haven't talked about is these uh, little circular boys. Those have three variants, green, blue, and red. The big green ones spawn little fish bullets that orbit around them. They're called orbital factories. The smaller red ones spawn the little fish bullets that immediately target and go after you, called vector factories. Then the blue ones we've seen previously, though maybe not in this level, spawn rings of blue bullets around them. They're called tendril factories. Interesting ones about the uh, the interesting thing about the blue ones is that once you destroy the main core, the bullets disappear. So if you're looking to get away from a potential down, sometimes the best policy is to panic on in, destroy the blue thing at the core. See, there's one, <laughs> and it's gone. And hope you don't get hit by the ensuing bullet spray before it disappears. Firepower is good for mopping up the wasps, too, which is why I always kind of want to have that with me when I'm playing as Licorice. She's not great at dispatching little tiny things. This is level 2 of Zone 3, this is uh, Transit, and it's kind of little fun gimmick is that we're on a train! And we also inherit the physics of said train. So earlier, before, we were going kind of slow. Now we're going super fast, and when we took corners, we would slide from one end of the train car to the next. And now it's done. <laughs> and now we're done with it. Oh boy, it's concentrating to get through most of that. This is uh, level 3 of Zone 3. This is Heat. You can see the gimmick right in the center, that uh, jet of flame there. Since it's blue, it will not do any damage to any of the robots, but it will certainly do damage to us. 
which makes it thoroughly less useful than its normal campaign counterpart, which happens to be a red flame. to give us some problems. Oh boy, that was a little dangerous. Tried to stick to the outside so we could get through that without... Uh, Losing momentum. Okay, that was a pretty good heat. No silly downs. <clears throat> hey, Street the Modnar, how you doing? Good to see you. Nice casual S plus. Maintaining a very slim time lead here, which is kind of surprising, even though I'm actively commentating over this having less concentration to do things means I do much worse. But we're holding steady. So this is the final level of Zone 3. This is Revolution. So if you thought the rectangular conveyor belts were bad, well here, have some circular ones. Because they're even better. AKA, they're even worse. Ooh. Oh, Doggo grabbed a hold of me so I couldn't fly over there. Ah, boarded out before I finished the slash. Oh boy. Time's grabbing a little panic shutdown is just the thing you need. It's flew a little bit further than I expected. I wanted to hit those two wasp cans. Sometimes the aiming on Licorice's slash is a bit dubious. Just kind of deal with it. So that was pretty good. We can get a nice chunk there. Get a nice chunk back there. All right, so now we're more than 11 seconds ahead. So here's uh, Zone Three boss. This is Justice. He's a big old bully. We're gonna do our best to be the anti-bully patrol here. Pretty good management of phase one. Didn't get caught by anything super silly. Good phase two. Stayed aggressive. Oh, 
I'll have a nice solid phase three. Excellent fight. Excellent fight. So bye, Justice. <laughs> nice casual S plus on Justice. Gain 34 seconds. My goodness. You can tell my previous runs Justice was not good. So now we're on to zone four. Again, new aesthetic, new music. And new level gimmicks. This one kind of teared itself down and reassembles. It's called assembly. Go figure. Oop. There. there. What I like to do is kind of hang out in the middle and ensure that it stays clear for me. But that doesn't always work out. see all the panels kind of fall in and out. I think there's six or seven different panels that can pop up with various holes and pillars on them. Ideally, we'd like them all to stay clear so we've got a clear shot on everything, but, you know, it's just not... It's just not what the game likes to have, let us have all the time. Oh, I swear I swapped there. Just got dumped on by a mine can. Oh well. slow it down there just because we didn't have didn't have firepower for a while and we didn't have full weapon power either stuck running away from the big blue boys Assembly. We're gonna lose a little bit of time, but that's okay. <laughs> By a little bit, I mean nearly 10 seconds. Oops. So here's the other corridor based level. This is level 2 on zone 4. This is relay. So similar to checkpoint, it will go on and on and on and on until we destroy all the enemies in this phase. As long as we keep destroying stuff as we go, we shouldn't have any issues. Oops. Stood there and took that one. level will also stay constructed and so we can get back and get that battery. If it was just a fire or if it was just a power up pack there that would be a different story. It'd just kind of fall off and that would be the end of it. Now we're kinda of in the second half, take the elevator up and continue on.
finally onto the final platform. A little arena style action to finish it off. Easy peasy. I'll lose a little bit of time because of uh, dumb silliness earlier on, but that's alright. So now this is level 3 of Zone 4. This is Focus. And the gimmick here is that we will drop down to ever larger platformers after each phase here see the platforms down below as we go. Third slash. I don't think we had enough. We had enough juice to get that one. I'll drop down again. We'll be dropping down one more time at the end of this one. That was a bad idea. Didn't have enough to swap out. Alright, that should be the final drop down. And we'll just fight it out. Oh, oh no. Grabbed me so I couldn't fly around. That's cool. So coming up next is the final level of Zone 4. This is Repeater. And like Influx in Zone 2, this one kind of deconstructs itself and reconstructs it around you. But unlike Influx, you can go on and on and on and on as long as it's got a limited number of tiles to kind of feed you on. So if you form a really narrow path, Eventually, you won't be able to go any further, and the path will always kind of stay constructed so you can get to power-ups and batteries and ground-based enemies. Oop. Every now and again, it'll pop in walls and pillars. Got to make your way around it. I hope you don't run out of tiles to get over to him. Ah, lots of rockets that we couldn't deal with. That's when the blue doggos had grabbed onto us. Lame. 
Ooh, that's gonna be a problem. <sighs> yeah, this is always a, a bad time with licorice when there's a huge group of wasps. We don't have firepower to mop it up. up in there. Okay. Mm. Reasonable repeater. I guess we're gonna claw back some time here. Four downs and we still gain two and a half. Okay, and on to the zone four boss. This is Venom. <clears throat> Big spider. Big pain in the butt. So we'll do our best not to take silly downs here. We did not do good enough. <laughs> Very many bullets to try to avoid. I'm not surprised I ate it there. Oh, come on. It's lame. Next phase is uh, a big, big turret in the middle. Keep your wits about you to get past it. turrets and even more bullet spreads and then an even bigger turret <laughs> even more bullets <laughs> oh boy kind of eating it pretty good here ah always kind of take a risk when you try to slash that Phase. He has had enough shooting bullets out here. He's coming for you now. Ah. Except the spew he leaves on the ground does damage you, so if you're on it, it's pretty much game over. That's alright. <clears throat> Wasn't a bad Venom fight, but now we will not have to fight him again. Five downs. Gained a partial second there. So now we're on to Zone 5. New aesthetic, new tunes, and this is Centrifuge. All the, enemies, ugh, all the enemies come in through the panels on the outside as it spins around wildly. And there's just a huge volume of them. Which makes this level very chaotic, but very fun. Ooh, that was a lot of mines. <laughs> oh, we almost got away. Almost got away clean on that. It was not to be, though.
Oh boy, that's getting a little dicey there. Okay. Pretty well managed, except for that down in the middle. That's alright. Lost a few seconds. So now here's control. The gimmick to this is that there's the three... three triggerable turrets on either corner of the level. This one happens to be a plasma shield, which will reflect bullets and do a little bit of damage. You might think that this is the best of them. It is not, so we're gonna jam on over to this machine gun turret here. It does heckin' good damage. It's generally the safest one to be around. There's also a rocket launcher one up at the top, but we will not be seeing that, probably. Unless I get scared and go run to it. Literally just hanging out in this corner, hitting the turret to start it up whenever it's recharged, finishing off the rest of the level as we go. Barely got away from my slash there. Okay, pretty clean control. Nice 11 second gain. Ooh. Ooh. Lost a slash target there. Like, uh, wondering why I wasn't moving. So this is convection. This is the final normal level in the game. The gimmick here is pretty obvious. There's a bunch of fire sitting right below us. We stand on it, we take damage, and eventually take it down. However, since it is red fire, it also does damage to the enemies for us. So we'll do our best to lure them onto the active burners and stay away from them ourselves. This is my favorite level. I'm just gonna say it. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I like it. Grabs me from across the way there. Lucky shot. Well, maybe not a lucky shot. I guess I did just stand there. Invited it upon myself.
Alright, that went pretty well. Went pretty gosh dang well. <laughs> so on to the final level of Zone 5, and also a peek at the mini boss here. Oh look, it's Licorice! But wait, we're playing as Licorice. So that's gonna be a fun fight later. <laughs> so the first half of the level starts off like any other. Big arena, bunch of robots, crush, kill, destroy. You know the drill. Later on, things get a little, shall we say, interesting. Oh, I thought I would be gone before. Yeah, one more, one more bullet would have done the trick. As soon as we finish off this phase here, we will be fighting Licorice. <laughs> we will be fighting ourselves, effectively. And since I've got time to explain it right now, but probably won't have time when I'm actually fighting her, she operates on the same principle that we do. She's an android, she requires battery, so instead of destroying her like we would normal robots, we really just need to run out her battery meter. And that sounds simple. Um, but she can also pick up batteries that float around, just like you can, so we need to do our best to keep those away from her. And the way to do that is like that. <laughs> is to pretty much control her and hope that she doesn't get things like that. And also hope that the battery doesn't pop near her like that. <laughs> Oof, that was a little close. At this point, having an accelerate is probably more important than having a firepower. Because that does attract the battery to you. This doggo needs to let go of me. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting it. So at a certain point, I will stop destroying things, like probably right now. And just try to keep her down so that when her battery does run out at the end, that's the end of the level. So she got one off of us. That's not great, but it's also not terrible either. So now we're on to the final, 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 final boss. <laughs> For serious. This is Medulla. And we'll be doing a boss rush of sorts of the various forms of the previous bosses, too, on the even phases. Oopsie, that was silly. Kind of ran right into that on my own. The odd phases, so 1, 3, 5, etc. We get the, the bullet and laser fest. Even phases, we get... The boss rush. So here's Embryo's kind of final phase, the refight of it. Let's do our best to knock this out quickly. There we go. Nice and, nice and clean. Then on to another spinny bullet phase. And on to the Vespi three fights. I'll try to do this equally as fast too, because the longer this kind of goes on, the more nervous I tend to get. <clears throat> then on to another spinny bullet phase, with big thick bullets that are essentially one hit knockdowns. And then on to the Justice three fights. Oh, I hung around near him for too long, so that's unfortunate. 
Ooh, that was a little dangerous. I should have finished the slash, though. Oh. And then on to the final phase. Ooh, which includes a laser that almost always gets me. <laughs> Dang it. This has been a not great Medulla fight. There we go. So there's the final phase of Medulla. And we're done! Not really. There's one more phase. Here's Geometry Wars, the modern version. Oh, that was kind of lame. So, a different, very abstract set of enemies, you know? Each with their own attack patterns. But really, we just need to clean this up and then we can call it good. So, not a terrible run, all things considered. We improved upon our previous one by a good 40 ish seconds. Get 4697 improvement. Not bad, not bad, not bad. And that's campaign plus. <laughs> so, significantly harder than campaign. As one would expect. But, by and large, same sort of thing. Go fast, destroy robots, win. Alright, so let me save that one real quick. And then we will spin up a different mode. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, maybe tonight. Maybe tonight is the night. Okay. Oops, hold on a second. Maybe tonight is the night <laughs> of beating Infinity Drive with Shiitake. Here's hoping. Here's hoping, you know? That'd be a great cap to the evening. That was silly. Just kind of stood right in the corner of a round room and let him come to me.
Nice zone 3 music. Good for what ails you. Ouch. Expected that thing to be dead. Okay. 
got a lot of layers to go before we actually need to start paying attention. Like 20. <laughs> like 20 or so. Casual ass a thousand chain. Come to visit briefly. <laughs> Fire power. Fire power. Oh, yep, yeah, see. <laughs> as soon as you call it out, it goes away. Oh, 
Wah, oh, dang. But I could sidestep that just enough. Be, of course, but at least we've still got full chain. Ooh, that was a little dicey. Setups for ball strats there. Oh, fucking ass wasps. Well, that was almost a good best day. Very rare for that any of that to happen. Okay.
that's a little dicey. Dang it. It's got through. Okay, come on. Swap, thank you. Oh, time to pull us back. Ah, really? Back before justice? care about that. Ooh, easy. Ah, nope. <laughs> There's a little too much damage going on there. Hey, you might go up. How you doing? Let's see. I'm here to see the prophecy fulfilled. Well, I'll do my best to make it happen, but I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, come the fuck on with that. Lame.
lame. Oh, come on! Is that bullets or laser that got me? <laughs> it was the... It was bullets from those dudes. I see. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Ooh, playing with power. And also stupidity.
Excuse me. Oh, come the fuck on! What was that? Hey, come on, how you doing? Let's see. Oh, what was that? Excuse me? Oh, that was not gonna end well, yeah. Okay. Bad spot down here. Clean that up, each. That was an ugly little bit of things. Okay. How oh, is he not dead? Layer 29. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that one. Oh boy, okay. There's too many wasp cans being bopped open at a time here. Why would that one be over there? That's lame. Shoot, I didn't realize we were on 31. <laughs> oh boy, okay, so I'm guessing this is Titan Gank then. 
very poor place to do the Titan gank. Oh, excuse me. We managed to survive it though, that's pretty incredible. Titan gank into Dark Embryo, so whatever, I guess. That's something. Another small victory to celebrate. Shut down this one because I don't want to deal with it. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Oh boy. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> Phew. And we're just going to shut this down too. Come on! Ah, oh, damn! Almost managed to keep chain there. Oh well, we made it through. Made it through without taking it down, that's something. working against me, regardless of which direction I take. battery we can get already. It's not even midway through 33.
Oh my god. Oh, almost went right into it too. Come on! Really? Fucking asshole. <sighs> Made it through that entire maelstrom. And one little line of bullets clips me. Probably. You need to let go now. <sighs> Fucking give me some firepower. <laughs> wow, that was a dicey little thing. So many rockets inbound here. Um, Doggo, come the fuck on with that. Good, lost both of those. I didn't need them. out in the middle because any errant shot can pop a battery. I need to grab it as soon as possible.
too late. Um. Okay. That was a little bit too close. Amazing. Fucking amazing. <sighs> Fucking serious, really. Why did that last doggo take so fucking long to spawn? <laughs> it's so lame. Fucking dumb as shit. Ugh. Lame, lame, lame. Do one more. Not that I expect it to turn out any better, but...
thing there, like a big super cool guy. last for 10 million years. It's the greatest. Oh, nice. Yeah.
all four of those. What? Okay, cool. Thanks for doing four damage in fucking zero seconds. That's awesome. Great. Fuck you, Vespi. Piece of shit. Okay. Eat my ass. Lame ass bullshit. For not recharging my health. That's cool. That's awesome.
on a health recharge, please. Thank you. That took three times as long. Okay.
that was a bad place to be. Oops. Okay, why didn't that mine blow up? Why didn't I lay in mine to be more accurate, I suppose? That's bullshit. Fucking ugh. asshole doggo.
Okay, yeah, thanks, conveyor belt. I fucking appreciate you being a jackass. What the fuck was that? Why did that just spontaneously open? That's fucking great. Thanks. Thanks for that. Like, I didn't have enough problems with this. Piece of shit. Did a rocket hit it or something? Like, that was fucking weird.
Okay. Fucking what? <sighs> Great. Well, probably fucks this entire run. Yeah, great. I'm glad you're caught behind the one fucking corner. That's awesome. Hopping around like a rabbit on crack, you motherfucker. Jesus. <sighs> Great. Chain again. Goddamn reason. Put the battery on the conveyor belt, thank you. Okay, nothing died, huh? Yeah, fucking bullshit.
Christ. Of course. Of fucking course. Can we maybe not do that fucking garbage? the fuck on. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Yeah, we're gonna die right here. This is bullshit.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just fuck you. Fucking lame. Alright, that's it for tonight. Uh, next stream will be tomorrow night, 7pm CDT. We'll see what we're gonna do. It's it's kind of a weird week schedule-wise, because I'm gonna be gone next weekend and got some other stuff I need to take care of before then. Mm. But that's it for tonight. Next stream will be tomorrow night, 7pm CDT. We'll see what we do. We'll see what we do. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.